You're watching Beyond 100 Days. The United Nations has called for top military figures in Myanmar to be prosecuted for genocide after inspectors released evidence of widespread murder, rape and torture of Rohingya Muslims. An estimated 700,000 Rohingyas have fled the country during the course of the past year. The report also criticises the country's leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, for failing to prevent the violence. It says she has also contributed to the commission of crimes. For years, Aung San Suu Kyi uh, was under house arrest and her calls for non-violent resistance to the military dictatorship made her a hero among human rights activists. Well, joining us now is Justin Wintle, who wrote The Perfect Hostage, a biography of Aung San Suu Kyi, and also by Rushanara Ali, the chair of the all-party parliamentary group on democracy in Burma, and she visited the Rohingya camps in Bangladesh last year. Welcome to you both. Hello. Um, can I start with you, Justin? How has Aung San Suu Kyi gone from Nobel laureate, an icon of peace and democracy, to this? It's a bit of a somersault, isn't it? Um, I think that if you trace her history, her family history back, her father, um, Aung San, General Aung San, who was really the creator and founder of independent Burma, uh, as it was then after the war, um, he never had any time, time for the Muslims at all. And so I think that she's inherited those attitudes. She died when she was two, but her mother, Dokin Chi, kind of raised her uh, to just accept everything he had said and, and believed in. I think there's something uh, more dodgy afoot, though, that she gave a speech last November, and her body language was, was very odd, and she was sort of backing the army. And I got the impression, which is confirmed to me by sources afterwards, that the army had basically told her, toe the line, or we suspend Parliament, and we will restore... Uh, but then she didn't the line rule. before, did she? Uh, it's only well, I mean, it was the last sort of thing. I mean, yeah. for, she was under house arrest for, yes. for so long, resisting mm. the army. Uh, and I think, that's I think she just. People, I it? think that she she decided she wants to be queen bee. Uh, she wants to be the national leader. Uh, the Burman people, the ethnic Burmans who are the majority, love her, and I think she's kind of settled for that. And it's desperately sad. Mm. She's getting old now and not in good health. But I find it the whole thing quite apart from the horrific stories which have been coming out from the human rights agencies over the last year. Rishinari, you, you, you have been a fierce critic of the, the sort of quiet diplomacy that's been going on and not really stopping any of this. Um, I know there is criticism from your side of the British government and the role they've taken, but there is very fierce criticism in this report of the role that the UN has played. That's right. Uh, this, the violence against the Rohingya has gone on for a very long time, in 2012 and then in 2016 and last year and a total of one million people have been forced out of Burma into Bangladesh and thousands were killed, women were raped, uh, children were killed in front of their parents, fathers were telling me uh, earlier um, uh, last year I went to uh, Rakhine State and previously and in July I went to Bangladesh to Cox's Bazaar and the stories are harrowing. Uh, so although the UN has taken some time to get to the conclusion it has reached today in this report, I welcome their report because they have uh, confirmed what many international institutions, uh, many NGOs and uh, human rights organizations have stated already that crimes against humanity and genocide has taken place. What we now need to move to doing is ensuring that the international community takes a leadership role. The UK is the lead member in the UN Security Council that our government takes a lead role in holding the Burmese military to account and seeking a referral to the International Criminal Court. The UK government has been good on humanitarian uh, issues on responding to the humanitarian crisis caused by the Burmese military, but poor at holding the Burmese military and Burmese uh, government to account, and that's what I'm looking for next. So, Roshanara, this is a very, you know, striking graphic report, and it points the finger at members of the Burmese military. Do you think the report in and of itself has teeth? Do you think this will be a step on the way to the International Criminal Court? Well, the proof is going to be in what the international community does in terms of the response. What we've seen is our Foreign Office Minister, Mark Field, has put out a statement, but he is deferring responsibility back to the Burmese government. Uh, now, that is just not acceptable because they are the perpetrators of, uh, of what the UN has described as 
genocide uh, and to put it back to the Burmese government to use its commission of inquiries to hold itself to account when it has been responsible for the uh, mass murder, the rape, the, the burning down of villages is just ridiculous and that's what's shocking about some of the responses of governments like ours and so what we need to do is see our government take a leadership role and ensure that there is a coalition built up around Europe but also in the ASEAN countries uh, with the support of the Americans and others so that we get a, a referral to the International Criminal Court that the Burmese military are held to account because if they don't and I've said this before right. and I'm afraid it's been uh, it's fallen on deaf ears if they are not held to account if there is not justice sought then they will do it again Justin, uh, let's return to Aung San Suu Kyi. Do you think she could make a difference? It doesn't actually sound to me that you are particularly optimistic that she will choose to speak out on behalf of the Rohingya for whatever uh, reasons that is. But do you think she is somebody who could make a difference in terms of the treatment? Well, I don't know what she can do. The only solution that occurs to me is if you went into voluntary exile, opened up an office in London or Washington or Paris, and then restarted her criticism of the military. Uh, but she says she has no signs of doing that. She, she's, she's made her bed and she's lying in. Just on uh, one matter on the report, it's very forceful. Nine months ago, the UN was talking about a textbook case of ethnic cleansing. It's now moved into genocide, which is a term, uh, you know, people are very cautious about using, but they've done that, and I applaud that. Um, we've all known that these things have ha have been going on. The problem with the ICC is that the way can be blocked by Russia or China in the Security Council, and if we can devise a way to, to persuade them to come on board, and I think it would be fantastic, then something can be done. Okay, okay. Justin okay. Wintel, Russian Ali, thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you.